We feel it's our privilege to extend solderability to all persons desiring to achieve a high standard of excellence in their work and to simplify working with solder and electronics. That's why we developed this video, Helpful Soldering Suggestions. These were based on Edson's Fanovision Solder Ability Training Manual to assist you in your soldering ability. We will begin with lighting and ventilation. Being able to see the task you're doing is important. Proper lighting will aid in seeing clearly and you may need to bring in additional illumination to accomplish this. Also, proper ventilation is needed to prevent breathing in fumes that are dispelled when soldering. You may need to bring in a fan, open windows, or other methods that will help so that you don't breathe in the fumes. Protecting surfaces. When you perform the soldering task, you want to protect or make sure the surfaces and or area will not be damaged by dripping molten solder. Also, be aware that molten solder can splash when hitting a surface. Match tip to task. Having the correct size soldering tip for what you will join is important as having the right size paintbrush to paint a house. Soldering tips come in different point styles, lengths, and mass. Match a tip that will make the most contact possible with the joining materials to be soldered. Joints must be clean. Joint materials must be free of dirt, oil, oxidation, and other contaminants. A suitable degreaser, alcohol, or abrasives may remove this. After doing this, flux should be effective in taking care of the rest. Properly tinned tip. There may be times the soldering tip was cleaned and not retinned before the tool was put in the holder and turned off. If this is the case, before turning on the tool, wrap rosin core solder around the tinned area of the soldering tip. As the tip heats up, the solder and flux will tin the tip. If it does not retin, you may try a damp sponge, dry tip cleaner, wire brush, or other methods to aid in retinning the tip but never file a plated tip. Doing this will remove its protection and expose the base material. Keep tip clean. Do not join materials with an oxidized or dirty soldering tip. This may transfer to the joined work and it just doesn't look good. Small solder globule. Having a small clean globule of solder on the tip aids in the transferring of heat when it comes in contact with joining materials. This increases the surface area contact than a dry tip would, efficiently heating the joining materials properly. Add solder to material. Do not apply solder directly to the soldering tip when joining materials. This can cause several problems like too much solder, cold solder joints, solder droplets, etc. When applying it to joining materials, it will indicate it's accepting the solder for a proper connection. Solder Fillets Having solder fillets or curvatures will show proper flow, connection, and amount of solder. When you cannot identify the appearance of the joined material, it is too much and might hide a bad solder connection. If there is no or minimal fillets present, then there is not enough solder, which may have only a surface connection between the joint materials and may peel off in time. We hope these suggestions will provide you with some knowledge to help in making your solder ability.